Well, good evening. Thank you for joining us uh, on this dark and chilly night. It's uh, wonderful to have you with us, and I hope you will enjoy what we have to share tonight, uh, both from my standpoint and also the standpoint of our special guest who will be popping in at the end. We have some real life examples to take what we learned last week that was kind of the almost like the theory behind staging, why it's important, what are some of the results you can expect when you stage a property. And today we are going to drill down and provide you with some very practical hands-on um, advice that you can be doing now. If you're planning to sell your house now or in the spring, or you're just not even sure when, there's a lot you can do um, that's going to help with the visual appeal of your property whenever it's time for you. So welcome. Good evening. My name is Sharon Parento. I'm a realtor with Keller Williams. And when I began working in real estate after a career in education, I literally started knocking doors in my neighborhood and found out that a lot of the people I was meeting were people who had lived in their homes 20, 30, 40 years or more. And they had similar questions. Uh, number one concern was how to prepare the house for sale to maximize the value and also sh cut down on the amount of time, shorten the time that it would take to sell. So we came up with some programs that were delivered in person to the public through community centers and libraries. I wrote guidebooks to go with them so that we could really be giving people good information because I strongly believe that when you have good information, you're going to make a better decision. So the Smart Realty Solutions team has always been committed to meeting people at their need, helping usher them along the process, and then also um, making sure that we are there as a resource, like a consultant. So I love that aspect of our job and I'm excited to be with you today. So thank you again for joining, you, uh, joining me and I hope this is a really mm, informative, helpful time. So here is our order of events today. We are gonna spend just a, a brief moment going back and looking at what we started last week. For those of you who weren't able to make us, who are joining us for the first time. We want to make sure that you understand the continuum of our, our thought processes here and show you some of the proof that I hope will turn you into a believer. Okay, so the vast majority of my clients, uh, 70 or percent, 70 percent or more, are downsizing seniors, people who have lived in their home a long time. And this whole notion of staging is kind of a a relatively new phenomena. It, I think it probably started like most things in the high end sector of the real estate and then has trickled down. So it's very, very common that properties require some degree of staging. And I'm gonna say that all of the properties that we list for sale, we do some degree of staging. And I'm gonna show you some various examples of what that could look like. Here is our definition of staging and it is the it's a process that is undertaken just before a property hits the market to create a visual appeal, um, to broaden the potential buyer base, to neutralize it, uh, to in some sense depersonalize it from the seller and then kind of rebrand it so that the message that is going out to the public the buying public is really targeted to the tastes and preferences of a 30 and 40 year old um, buying public. So we're trying to transform properties to create that wow effect so that when they know that it matches their criteria for price and neighborhood and size and all of those things, then now they are really gonna step out and they are going to come and see your property. And and in today's overheated seller's market, a lot of people might be tempted to skip this step thinking, oh, it's going to sell. But you know what? It really makes the difference in the final price that it sells for because people make an emotional connection to the property uh, when it's staged because they, re they really start to desire it. And we want to 
capitalize on that. So this is how we live. Now, this is what the way we sold homes when I first sold a home uh, 12 years ago. It was just enough to tidy up, declutter, you know, make it look presentable as if you were having company come over. But the problem is that today's buyers are very visually savvy. They process information extremely quickly and they make an almost instantaneous decision when they are looking at properties online whether or not they are going to pursue that property and engage with the pictures and find out more details or whether they are just going to swipe left like a dating app and keep going to the next listing. So in this case, this was a property that was listed with another agent. These were the pictures that appeared on MLS and not surprisingly, it didn't sell. And I'm talking months, months and months and months up until just about a year. They kept relisting it, lowering the price, and people just said, no, that looks like too much work. They made a snap decision that this was going to take hundreds of thousands of dollars for it to be up to kind of modern standards, and they just kept voting with their feet. No, they never got a single offer, and they had very few showings. When we took over the property listing from you know, after it had expired and, and everything was finished, we took it over and we strongly encouraged the, the clients who were seniors to stage the property. And there was resistance, there was pushback. It wasn't a familiar concept to them, but when we showed them the results and they sold their home in multiple offers, they were very grateful that they had heeded the advice because we were asking a luxury price for a home that did not present with a visual message that supported that price point. And when we staged it, it really did. The wow factor of this property could be seen. And more importantly, the, the red flags were pulled down. All of the buyer objections were pulled down. So we need your property to be presented in its very best light across a variety of social media, print media, even video. Uh, and we can only deal with good raw material, right? Like I can send out the most talented um, crew, photography crew and videography crew in the world. But if they've only got grandma's cozy cottage <laughs> to work with, it's really hard to get those compelling images. So I want to just show you, this is just a little brief teaser of this property. And why we have to stage the majority of the home. Wherever possible, we used the client's own furniture, but we did have to rent some accessories, some end tables, things like that. Um, and you're gonna see that even in the secondary rooms, like the bedrooms and upstairs, the messaging was consistent, that this is a property that was very desirable and would appeal to a modern family. Such a pretty, pretty house, but it just wasn't being shown at its best advantage. So that's what staging does, is it allows us to have the basic building blocks to create a strong marketing campaign and really amplify that visual appeal. So in the United States, a couple of years back, they conducted a huge survey of realtors, buyers, and sellers. And they reported that the most important impact of staging a property came in the fact that buyers could visualize themselves in the space. And you can see that when we have the lazy boy recliner sofa, <laughs> buyers are just not going to be able to envision themselves in there. They're looking for that little touch of glam and we really have to give them what they want in order to peak that, that interest and get them to come and see your home. So the other thing, of course, is that properties sell much more quickly when they're staged, especially versus vacant. Okay. So we are now all believers that staging has a positive impact on the outcome. But when it really comes down to it, it is a dollars and cents investment. This isn't just 
to make my life easier so that I've got pretty pictures that I can post and, you know, move on to the next listing. No, 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 no. This is about making you more money. And it's very difficult to measure. There are properties that are staged and properties that are not staged. And it seems like in today's market, everything is selling for astronomical numbers, but it is really about tweaking it up. And in no other realm can I offer you an improvement on your investment of between 10 and $200,000 just because we were able to capture those compelling images. It's quite astounding. I would say we have one particular example where we listed a townhouse in Vaughan, in the Vaughan side of Thornhill, directly across the street was the identical property. And as a matter of fact, it actually looked a little nicer on the outside. It had beautiful gardens, but the, it was the same property, same degree of renovation. Um, we staged, they didn't. We sold for $27,000 more on a $900,000 townhouse. So that, I guess, is quite measurable, isn't it? So I am not just whistling Dixie. I want to really show you how that is achieved. Number one, we're looking to create a positive first impression that is light and bright. We're increasing to the maximum possibility the spaciousness of the home because like everyone, your buyer wants the biggest house they can afford, right? Am I right? So the other thing we want to do, we talked about this last week at length, is establishing a flow. I'm going to give you some real life examples of properties we've listed and sold this year um, with our amazing stager, Courtney Keys. And she is a really good practitioner of creating that beautiful visual flow. Mostly, I think her special talent is mostly using the client's own furnishings. So she's able to piece things together in a way that sometimes the homeowner really doesn't even imagine. Um, and we're all about restoring the function of rooms. An example might be a spare bedroom. If you're an empty nester like I am, now my middle daughter's room is my office, but I'm gonna tell you if I was selling my house, this would go back to being a bedroom. And uh, lots of us are working from home and kind of setting, setting up workstations, maybe in the, the principal bedroom, the biggest bedroom of the house could have a um, TV in it or um, an elliptical row, whatever. It's not an exercise room. It's a bedroom. It's a sleeping room. So we want to restore that function whenever possible as well. And then we've been talking about the feeling and you're going to see some pictures that are from homeowners, 55 and older, who were downsizing and allowed us to transform their homes to create that wow. And I know that they were happy they did. So let's get down to brass tacks. What are some of the things you can do? We're gonna go through room by room and I'm gonna give you not a make work, list but an actual make money list and I want to make sure also that we leave enough time at the end for your questions either through the chat box or by unmuting and asking us okay because it's really important to me that when you leave here you're going to have a sense of purposefulness in how you tackle preparing your own home okay so one of the things we really want to deal with is the main floor in general. And a lot of what Courtney taught us last week was that staging is the process of editing. Now we all have to live with a toaster and a coffee maker and maybe our blender or juicer, whatever, all the appliances out. But when we are getting ready to sell a home, we really want to keep all of that countertop as clean and clear as possible. Um, it really shows the amount of workspace that we have. It helps the cupboards and the other things to stand out and people aren't really distracted by your little appliance collection, right? So kitchen clutter. The other thing I always wanna do, if you have a kitchen window, we really like to 
take down the curtains a lot of times or at least push them back so that there's no obstruction of the amount of light coming into that space at all. The, the lighter, the brighter, the better. And of course, we're also going to take some of the collections away if you've got plates up on the wall or uh, magnets on the fridge or any of that kind of stuff. We, we tuck that away for the purposes of staging. And I even don't like tea towels. I don't like tea towels on the handle of the oven, the oven door, because immediately your eye is drawn to that. And it becomes kind of a distraction or a focal point that's unintended. And the same thing with those little rugs that go in front of the sink. Uh, I know that they are comfortable to work on, but for the purposes of getting your house visually marketed, I always tuck those away. No scrubbies, no dish detergent bottles. And if you have one of those jars, like every home seems to have a jar of utensils, you know, like we sometimes just edit them out. And we, if it's got 11 things in it, we pull it down to five or six. So we will add back some coordinated accessories. One of the things we joke about is that we just really need a, bo a bowl of limes and three bottles of Perrier on the counter and your house will magically sell. Um, and the other thing that I've seen recently is I've uh, gone into showings with buyer clients and we see like an open cookbook um, with a big bowl, like a big ceramic chunky bowl as if they were just getting ready to make uh, some cookies and we happen to interrupt them. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a cliche in staging, but we really want this kitchen to be scrupulously clean. No chair pads, no tea towels, no carpets, nothing. And um, everything, of course, polished and fresh and looking its best, okay? Don't forget about your windows and your windowsills. That's a little freebie from me to you with love. So bathrooms, the same thing. Can I just say in general, we don't want to be reminded that real people actually use this bathroom. <laughs> so I don't want to walk into a staging situation and see, you know, or a showing situation and see bottles of different shampoo and go, oh, I use Pantene too. And, and toothpaste and, you know, we don't want, I don't even like toilet scrub brushes in the pictures for the houses or uh, waste receptacles. We want this completely stripped out of any resemblance of a functional bathroom <laughs> in that sense that people are actually living there and using it. So we also really, really switch it up to make it look like a spa type of retreat bathroom, like maybe a boutique hotel. So it's white fluffy towels, white shower curtain, um, maybe a little uh, paw carry jar of sh fancy shampoo and soap or something like that but really the day-to-day -day stuff is tucked away in a basket underneath the, the counter and again we don't like I don't put out bath mats I don't like those little toilet lid covers or the, the little carpets around the toilet none of that all of it needs to be put away so that it looks fresh and clean and that there's no obstruction of the eye lines that there's nothing breaking up the pattern of the floor. We also suggest you probably take down most of your art. We're going to put up a few little things, but really keep it to a minimum. Okay, so bathrooms, we don't want to know. We don't want to know that people actually go to the bathroom in there. <laughs> it's just like a sh pretend bathroom. Okie dokie. Now, the master bedroom really has to say to these busy, overworked parents that are coming in, you know, dual income family looking at the, your house. They want to know that this master bedroom is a retreat, an oasis of peace and harmony. And I, nothing would disturb that vision more than a treadmill or, or a big black TV or a workspace or whatever. So as a general principle, I'm going to ask you to remove anything from the master bedroom that is not actually a bedroom <laughs> so you've got a filing cabinet you've got any of that other stuff what we really want to do is pare it down to the bedroom the bed i mean the side tables and maybe one or two other dressers 
If you have an extremely large bedroom, then maybe we have a little sitting area set up with a, a chair or whatever, but all the rest of it, we are gonna ask you to tuck away and you can prepare for that now. Lots of times I, I come into homes uh, where there, there's two or three dressers in the master bedroom, um, but at least one of them is just storage. It's not the regularly used one. So if you can start packing up your non, your off season clothing, and even better, if you can start purging it, that's a great place to start. Okay, so the collection of books and the VCR and the tapes and the, all of that stuff, we're gonna pack it away. And now here's another little tip I mentioned in my, my slide here is that when you're standing at the, the doorway of the master bedroom and any bedroom, as a matter of fact, we want to be able to look to see the head and the foot of the bed, not the side of the bed. So occasionally we've uh, worked with clients to rearrange the furniture in the, in the, the uh, master bedroom because it really photographs much, much better. Okay, so I actually showed you an example of that last week where there was a walkthrough and it, the bed had been against the side. You would see the long side of the bed and we, we rotated it so that as you stepped into the room, it came head and foot towards you. And I actually just did this in my daughter's makeover. We did a makeover for her birthday and we pivoted all the furniture, rearranged it, and it just it just looks so much nicer in general. Okay, so make sure if you have questions, you're noting them down, we'll get to them very soon. Now, the same thing with all bedrooms is that we're gonna replace as much of the colored or patterned bedding um, to just a neutral white. And we're going to make sure that all the vertical surface, no, horizontal surfaces are cleared off. A huge decluttering for lots of our kids' bedrooms. Um, if you have turned one of your bedrooms into an office, uh, I'm going to highly suggest, as I mentioned in my case, that it would go back to a bedroom. Just because you have to think that buyers really lack imagination. And if I post the pictures and it's a four bedroom home and they see bed, 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 office, reg it's gonna register as a three bedroom home. So we wanna make sure we're showing it at its highest value, the highest and best purpose. And so that's gonna be one of the things, again, you can start working on. We'll bring in the color, don't you worry. The color is gonna come in when we, we stage it. Now, I'm gonna be showing you some pictures very shortly with dining rooms, because dining rooms are really a great place to for homeowners to start the editing process. First of all, many of us have dining sets that have tables with leaves. So we're gonna take out those leaves and you know compress the table into it, compact the table into its smallest size. And maybe we're gonna take it from six or eight chairs just down to four um, because it's gonna give you more space to walk through. When uh, a realtor and the, the buyers are going through, we don't wanna to have to shimmy past everything. So that's a great idea that you can be doing now. And then also in terms of things like a china cabinet and hatch, a lot of us have it filled up to the gunnels and stacked plates and cups. I'm gonna recommend that you edit at least 50 to 70% of it out, pack it away. You're gonna to need to pack it now anyway to, to make your move. And maybe this is also the time to decide what you're going to keep and bring with you to your new place and what you are going to gift or donate or sell. This is a really terrific winter project. You can sit there and go through your teacup collection and save the five or six best that you like and, you know, um, get rid of the other ones or give them to one of your kids and let them worry about it. So when you look at a china cabinet, usually they have three doors and two shelves. So there's like nine little boxes to fill visually if it's a glass front. So keep out the nine sparkliest, nicest, shiniest things. Um, and we're really also trying to neutralize the color palette. So not a lot of color in those china cabinets, but crystal or silver, all of that re looks really nice when it is pared down and just showing the best of the best. 
A lot of times we also will pull up the dining room carpet. If there's an area rug over top of hardwood, we really want to show that hardwood. That's a big value to buyers. So, uh, and especially if it's a pattern carpet, it can be quite distracting. And, and we will roll that up and put it aside. And sometimes we leave the floors bare and sometimes we bring in something very neutral, very plain, something like maybe a cream colored uh, sizal rug or like a Berber with no pattern just a, just a block of light color. So those are the things that you can be doing. I absolutely love having a mirror in a dining room because it helps to reflect the light. Um, and if you have shears that have a topper panel on them, whether that is like a swag or um, whatever, a valance or a fabric valance, Virtually all of the time, we take down that second layer of drapery, just leaving the shears, opening it up because we want to show as much light as we can. And especially if you have a nice view of the backyard or you know, the deck or whatever, we want to show that as well. So these are the frequent things that we do is we take down the heavy curtains and we're going to replace them with a more contemporary look, which are panel curtains either on a pocket or with grommets or something a little more contemporary. I love um, like a faux silk look, something has a little schlub in, a slub in it, you know, um, and making sure that we take down most of the representational art. If you are having your house painted in preparation of sale, don't put it back up because the chances are you're gonna start putting holes in your freshly painted walls and we're gonna ask you to take it down anyways because when we live in a home for a long time and we acquire pieces, we like them individually, but they don't always coordinate together. So we wanna make sure that when we are staging the property, there's a continuity from room to room and a cohesiveness of design. And that's just not the way we typically live. Nobody goes out and gets all color coordinated art. And a lot of the times uh, we will take down representational art, like so your architectural drawings or landscapes or you know um, still life. And we lots of times we swap it out for abstract art just because it just somehow doesn't have as much visual weight and, and isn't a focal point. So we want to just kind of reduce that and let the room speak for itself and that people aren't drawn to your artwork or on the other hand, they decide they don't like that kind of art. Um, we don't want that influencing their decision and, and it could on an unconscious level. So for sure, dining rooms are a great place to get started on the decluttering, the editing, and maybe just rearranging the furniture so that you've got as much space as possible. So I also want to remind you to pay attention to the front entrance. This is where people get the very first impression of your property as they walk through it. So we want to take out the bench. Most of the times um, I take out the area carpets too. Uh, lots of people have runners down the hallway and that really breaks up the, the, the sight lines, right? It really uh, chops up the space visually. So we want to have the hallway to be free. Um, many of my clients have some kind of floral arrangement at, on the curve of their staircase it's on the floor. We typically take that out. And we also take down virtually all of the wall art. Again, because it's going to photograph is much more spacious if, if the walls aren't broken up with different frames, different prints. Um, and I again, another great place for a mirror is in the front hall maybe with a little demi lune console table for business cards of the realtors or just a place to have the feature sheets that we're going to print for you, all of that kind of stuff. So the front entrance is a often neglected place and sometimes it can become a bit of an um, inadvertent dumping ground of shoes. And so that reminds me about front hall closet. It's not typical that all of the closets are going to, you know, get a, a viewing, but occasionally people will look into the closets. And this is a good time as we change over seasons to take your off season clothing and items and start packing them away so that we can see the amount of closet space in the home. Um, 
for example, one of the things we like is to see the back of the closet. So if you open up your front hall closet and it's bursting with coats and things that you don't like, don't wear, but are just storing there, this is also a wonderful time to start pulling them out, assessing them, donating them, you know, sending them to the cleaners, whatever you need to do. But we really do like a front hall closet that is organized. One of the best and cheapest places to go is Dollarama. I just saw these pop-up fabric boxes that you could stack on your shelves um, for hats and mitts or dog leashes or whatever it is that is just kind of hanging loose in the closet, okay? So those are some suggestions of making that good first impression throughout your home, depersonalizing, cluttering, decluttering, editing, and really neutralizing the color palette whenever possible with linens, taking down wall art, using mirrors, keeping things sparkly, but not necessarily too much color. And I also wanna remind you of the importance of good maintenance on the outside. Now, I love staging the exterior of properties. As a gardener, I know that when I see a, a property that has a beautiful, uh, backyard, I want to show it off as a value added um, feature of that home. So I really encourage the homeowners to have the patio set set out. Um, well, I will often bring planters from my, my favorite nursery and set those out while we're listing the home. Um, and actually, I, I got some from Terra Greenhouses in Vaughan. And if you were closely watching my my listings this summer, these planters just kept getting moved from listing to listing. As we sold the house, I would take them back and then the next time we had a house for sale, we would go and move them. So boy, I got my money's worth. But we really like to stage the outside of homes to show them as valuable living space because more and more people are looking for that outdoor living space to be an extension of the inside. So. Um, if you have pictures of your property in the summer when the pool is open and the patio furniture is all set up, that is a, a great thing, even if you're planning to list in the winter, to include in the listing um, photos online. So one of my pet peeves are rusty mailboxes on million dollar houses. So these are all little tweaks you can be working on. Maybe it's replacing the inexpensive light fixture from the builder and putting something with a little more pizzazz or um, even just making sure that it's all clean and, and the windowsills are freshly painted. I just literally did that on the inside of my house. I had new windows installed and I went around this weekend and started painting some of the window frames and all of those things add up to uh, an impression that this house has been well maintained and um, even if there are cosmetic improvements that the buyer would want to make. It's like buying a used car and you just have confidence that this car has had its oil changes and that it's been taken to the shop and everything is in good working order. That's the impression we want to create there as well. I think the front door is one of the few places you can have a little splash of color. So something complimentary to your brick. What's really popular right now are, are dark colors, even black is, is really, really popular right now as a front door color. Um, so all of those things that you see listed there, the new house numbers, replacing the pitted brass kick plate on the front door, making sure you've got some seasonal planters if you, know, if you can, and all of that is going to create that positive first impression. I do see some questions coming in. I'll make sure to address them at the end, okay? So the whole home just needs to be lightened, brightened, neutralized, decluttered, as we've mentioned. Arranging to furniture to allow for a flow of people. Um, we're having extremely good response to our open houses now that they're allowed again. Um, and we keep it all COVID safe. I have several protocols in place, uh, but there is a lot of traffic at any of our listings right now. I think the I think the highest number of listings we had uh, showings at a recent listing was was well into the 70s or 80s, like it was 75 or 80. 
people came through in the very short time that the property was for sale. So we do want to allow for people to come through and not have any of their traffic impeded by furniture. Okay, so those are some whole home tips for you. Um, and then I just want to kind of put a bug in your ear about other things that are not specifically staging, but really contribute to the overall presentation of your property. Pretty. Uh, repainting cabinets. This is getting more into like our other seminar called the best renovations for return on investment. But I just I just want to bring this to your attention that while you're in the mode of improving the visuals of your home, the cosmetic improvements, things like replacing the the hardware in the kitchen or bathroom, if you've got little brass knobs to replace them with something that's more like a, a brushed nickel. Um, I was in a listing once lately where every switch plate cover was a different collectible. We had Disney, we had one from Venice, we had all of that. So just getting back to the, the basic decor switches, perhaps you, you do wanna add a bit of a fresh coat of paint to the front door, uh, something that is a little more eye catching and especially clean. So here's a little tip. We, uh, this is from a really recent example where the front of the door was great, but the back of the door, the interior of the door was really marked up. It had been kind of beaten up over the years and neglected and a fresh coat of trim paint on the inside of that door made it just pop, pop. It's, it's just, it's not even something that you might even register consciously, but I'm telling you when it, done, it was done, it was a huge improvement. And things like faucets in the kitchen, you don't have to do uh, an expensive granite kitchen to get top dollar, but if you have a corroded faucet or one that drips, any of that kind of thing, that is a fairly inexpensive investment that's gonna really help create that more up-to-date appealing, broadly appealing um, impression of your home, okay? So other things I can re recommend, uh, the light fixtures, that they don't have to be expensive. We're not looking for necessarily uh, super luxury, but it's amazing what kind of little bit of bling can do. Um, and I noticed that Costco can be a good source for these, where you can buy a multi-pack of of the hallway lights, um, you know, the ones that are flush mounted. And those can be a nice update um, and lots of inexpensive lighting fixtures for kitchens and living rooms seem to be, uh, kitchens and dining rooms seem to be hitting the market. So check out Costco or even, even Walmart. But uh, my favorite place is the clearance bin <laughs> at Home Hardware, um, Home Depot. So. We also can suggest to you that even in table lamps and things, if you actually have lampshades that are this shape, kind of triangular, the more modern silhouette right now is like a barrel shape. So again, going on to Walmart, you could get yourself some new lampshades that will use the same base, but for 30 or $40 a lamp, you can completely modernize it, which is a great little decorating hack. We can't afford necessarily to pull out the bathtub, but if you want to change the color, we have some effective strategies um, where we can reglaze the bathtub or the kitchen, sink, um, the bathroom sink if it, the enamel is chipped. Those are all things that can be repaired and they are just cosmetic improvements that are going to make a difference over the long haul. We've talked at length about decluttering. You could even consider upgrading your countertops to something that look like faux granite or faux quartz when it's just actually laminate. That's a, a possibility there, especially in the bathrooms. I, I think that can really make a difference. And while you're doing it, let's remember to neutralize the paint colors, okay? So all of these work in conjunction with staging things you can be doing now in preparation for opening up your home to the public scrutiny and making sure that it is well accepted in the marketplace. Okay, we're going to get to some questions very soon, but I just wanted to show you, this should not say after and after, it should say before and after. This is what staging does. It takes a home that has been lived in and enjoyed and loved, and it just brings that little tweak 
so that it feels really put together. Um, and obviously they were in the middle of packing when this before picture was taken, but all of the accessories are coordinated from room to room. And we used their basic table here, but pulled in some light colored fabric chairs and it just immediately lightens the space. But you'll see that everything else is really just accessories. Sorry, really just accessories. Okay, nothing too costly involved with that, is there? So I don't think Courtney is able to join us tonight. So I just wanted to show you some recent staging endeavors that Courtney and I took. These are listings that I worked with Courtney on. And originally this living room had a really, oops, sorry, really large, um, sofa in it that was quite patterned in pink and green and, and cream and the carpet was the same. It was a very traditional carpet, um, floral pattern, a little bit busy in the green and pink and cream and then we also had a love seat in front of the living room. Now my client wasn't planning to take these to her new condo so we didn't have an issue there but this is rented furniture that we brought in with the exception of the little bookcase in the corner. So all of this came together and presented a, just a much more contemporary, attractive, appealing, and nothing blocking the front window so that we could get as much light in as possible. So that's a real life example of a property in Markham that was staged earlier this year. Now this is the same house and you can see again, whenever possible, we're using the furniture that the client owned as a backdrop for more contemporary pieces. So we took out, this was a very colonial looking dining set. It was a round table. And when the leaf was put into it, it was oval and all of the chairs were that colonial kind of naughty pine look. So we kept the, we kept the china cabinet and the little uh, servery on the corner, but because she really didn't have any place to put them and they were really heavy. But then we brought in a contemporary glass table that was just much more neutral. And when skillfully done, as in this case, it just seems to harmoniously blend the new with the old and it all just looks like it, it goes together. But at the same time, appealing to a modern buyer. Now this was a recent sale in Richmond Hill. And it's interesting because this living room furniture was actually in the family room. And the combination of two leather love seats was too large for the family room. So immediately Courtney and I agreed that this should come up and be the living room furniture. And since it was light and the other furniture that was here was very dark, it served our purposes. And you can see how we retained the china cabinet. It was cleared out, um, but the rest of the accessorizing was very modern and um, it looks just, as my grandma would say, very swish. <laughs> so this was not a luxury property, but it still has a bit of glamour in the way that we accessorized it. Again, blending the old with the new in a seamless presentation that won this client 121% of asking. So when I tell you that it makes a difference monetarily, it absolutely does. Okay, so we had all boots on the ground for this presentation. We had only two weeks to clean, stage, pack, declutter this property and get it to market. So from start to finish, this house was prepared and sold in 19 days. Woohoo! So this is an example of where, again, we're using the client's existing pedestal table and we brought in these lower profile contemporary light fabric chairs. So the client loved these so much that she went and found them at HomeSense and bought them for her new condo, which I thought was really a terrific recommendation. So again, we opened it up. Originally this had, I think it had four chairs and then two in the corner and a bunch of small furniture. There was a little, um, like a little, desk, not a desk, but like a little table or a small sized hutch in front of the patio doors um, and a bunch of other things in this room that we took out. We opened up the, the blinds that they were used to having the blinds down all the time. We had the blinds up, brought in just a little, this is even their painting. So 
you can see that the idea of staging isn't that we empty out your house and put everything in a pod on the driveway, but we use whatever we possibly can and lighten and brighten. Oh yeah, there was a carpet here. We pulled up the carpet. We wanted to show off these nice hardwood floors. So that's an example of a home just two weeks ago that we were working with to prepare it for market and or three weeks ago. Now, this is one of my favorite um, recent as well. This is a kitchen. This carpet was up in the principal bedroom, the master bedroom. This is the client's table again. These are the chairs. This was this painting was in another room. I can't remember if it was the living room or the family room. And these are stools that were brought in by the stager. But the tremendous thing was the again, the client loved this. She never thought of this painting with these this carpet in the living room it just didn't seem she was uh, quite resistant initially to this idea but when it all came together it just looked like it had always been there and really really suited the tone of the table and was a complimentary um arrangement so again making sure that everybody could get out to the patio doors that none of the all of the small furnishings there was a very large desk here um, and there was children's furniture here all of that was taken out just so that we could show it at its most spacious don't forget we're going to get to some questions very soon this is the same house and this bedroom had literally hundreds and hundreds of books in it <laughs> not joking i am not joking and these were all color coordinated. Um, I pulled them down, added it out a lot of them and then color blocked them. And we took this chair. This chair was actually in the master bedroom. This was in another bedroom. We brought in these tables were in the family room. We brought them up and then put in some color coordinated linens and just set it up as, as a bedroom this way. It did not look anything like this before. It was all in blue and turquoise and, and green. So just again, making it very soft, very, very neutral, very appealing. And we are, I don't know if you can tell, but we're kind of dealing with greeny, very, very light green carpet, which was difficult. So now this was a vacant stage. And this is hilarious because this entire condo that we recently sold was cut, was painted like a terracotta orange. Um, it's lighter in this picture, but it was a really difficult color to work with. And our stager did such a great job, both with rented furniture and some of the client's existing pieces that people were asking me, what's the color of that paint? It's so lovely. <laughs> I was going, oh my goodness, it is, so 1999, you wouldn't believe, but in the right hands, any color is workable. So we asked the homeowner if we could paint out this property and the answer was a resounding no. So we had to deal with what we were given and we made the best of it. And it really, I think looks quite sharp, really quite attractive in the end. But when I first walked in there, I thought, oh my goodness, how am I gonna sell? an orange house. <laughs> How am I going to do an orange condo? How am I going to, it was terracotta. So you can see that any, anything can be made to work in the right hands. And now we were talking about outside space and this is a condo in Aurora that we recently sold. And I took the pictures from the MLS and you can see this was vague. Like this didn't have any of this furniture here. That's the planter that went everywhere <laughs> this summer uh, made a showing here. And we actually brought in rented furniture to show this patio at its best because there's a huge L-shaped terrace uh, in a condo on Young Street in Aurora. And we wanted to show that this had potential in two different zones. This was the sitting and relaxing zone. And there was another, uh, the other side of the L-shape uh, that you can't see, it's out of frame. There was a dining set set up with table and chairs, place for the barbecue, maybe like a bar cart, all of that. So outside spaces are a real value added and we wanna stage those whenever we can. 
So this furniture was rented and brought up to the condo and set up and then returned back once we sold it. Um, I think it looks really attractive, especially showing a sense of proportion there that this isn't just a narrow balcony, but this is actually a 400 square foot terrace. We wanted to show that in its best light. Now, this is one of my favorite recent sales. It's up in Stouffville on Musselman's Lake earlier. And it had so much great outdoor living space. We wanted to show that off again, the idea of zones, that we have this beautiful teak and rattan set that welcomes you as you come up. It was very complimentary to the front door. You can't quite see it, but trust me, it was really attractive, uh, very welcoming. And then we had this other um, set up here where there was dining and this, you know, there was a barbecue back here. So you would come here and eat. So again, we wanted to show the function. Remember we had talked about the function. Well, that also applies to the outside of the property. So you've got a balcony. We show it as a balcony that you can go have your coffee on. You've got a little sitting area where you can watch the view or entertain your friends. We wanna show the function and create that visual flow from space to space. Okay, so those are all recent live examples of what staging can do in creating that really terrific photograph, capturing that great image and allowing for the best possible result. So we're, we're gonna, we're going to answer some of your questions, uh, both, you can type them into the chat box now and then I'm going to also answer the questions that came in ahead of time by email. Number one, where do you store your stuff during staging? Well, as I mentioned, the biggest pieces of furniture are generally retained as kind of the anchor for the staging endeavor. So the rest of it is accessories. So small tables and artwork, we usually find place in what, oh, storage room in one of two places, either in a basement, maybe the furnace room, maybe it's an un unfinished basement or it's partly unfinished. We like to put things there or for the very short duration that your home will be for sale with us, we can also put it into the garage if you have one. Um, if none of those options are available, sometimes we sacrifice a bit of the basement even if it's finished to, to take that on, but it's gonna be a big encouragement from our side to um, edit some of that so that we don't have as much to contend with. But I have never had a problem so far with not being able to store it on site. That's the, the, the best solution for storage is to store it somewhere on the property rather than say renting a storage unit because that can get extremely expensive even in the short term it can be expensive okay so number two how can i find a stager well most everyone now has a staging like has a website with a portfolio and it's important that you choose someone that is certified um, that has a professional staging designation that can provide you with examples of their recent work i'm going to tell you that i really don't like when properties are overstaged when there is you know, just as many tchotchkes from the stager as there was from the homeowner. I don't like that cluttered look. I think it's it's not achieving the end goals of staging. So ask to see their work. Or if you're looking for a recommendation, there are several. Courtney's my, my go-to person, but I've worked with many talented stagers in the past and can help you find somebody in your area. But those are the main thing, three things. Check that they are professionals and certified see their a portfolio of work if possible, ask for references, um, and then make sure that they're gonna provide you with a written estimate of their services, what's included, and more importantly, what's not included. When we have a large piece of furniture that needs to be moved out of sight for storage, if we're taking the living room sofa and putting it into the garage, for example, who is responsible for doing that? And if the, the stager is going to do it, is there any kind of upcharge for that? So really nail down what you have to do and what they are going to do and you know, make sure that you are in agreement. Now, 
which store would you recommend to buy furniture for staging? Well, I'm not sure that I would buy furniture for staging. Most of the time, oh, um, our stagers have some inventory that they keep. So they have a warehouse with furniture that they own and will bring to their different staging jobs. But a lot of times it's rented furniture. There are several companies that you can scope out online to rent things. So unless you really love that contemporary style and you're planning to take it with you to your new house, I don't think I would buy it. But my favorite on, online furniture place is wayfair.ca. I personally buy furniture there for my own, but I've also bought staging furniture there. And they have a really good um, shipping policy. It's very prompt. They have a lot online that you can see and they have some good deals, especially with Black Friday coming up. But in general, I don't think it's up to the homeowners to buy furniture when we have the option of renting it instead. So if the number four was, if the condo does not include a locker, does the condo corporation have lockers that can be rented? If so, what would be the typical size and monthly cost? No, the condo corporate corporation does not typically get into that. Sometimes it will be posted on well, let me just back up again. There's a property manager on site at the condo usually or a company that's charged with the property maintenance. They might be able to give you some information about a condo storage locker. And I can tell you that in general, they are, I just actually last week for a buyer's visit, we have clients moving into a condo very soon and we went to measure their locker and it was four feet wide by, seven feet deep by eight feet tall and it's like a large wire cage so four by seven by eight and most everybody has things just kind of stacked on the floor but if you really want to make use of it you could install some of your own shelving it's not provided by the condo but you could bring it in so that you could really maximize that the efficiency so it might be worth a call to the condo property management to see about lockers for rent from other condo owners but um, I you know I don't hold out too too much hope for that solution to be honest okay so that's about storage lockers in condos and is it worth using an auction company to sell furniture or is Kijiji a good alternative well it depends how much you have we use a company called Max Sold and they will come in and organize it for you. Uh, they take a cut of the proceeds so they will organize things into lots. They will take photographs, they will put it up on their website. People, they get a lot of traffic to their website and it's an auction style. So you might have, for example, uh, they organize it into a lot of, let's say, Tupperware containers, let's just pretend. And it starts at $1 and then the bidding goes up and there's a certain duration for the, for the online auction. And as long as bids are continuing to come in, they'll hold that auction open. But as soon as it's gone past the time and bidding stops, it locks in at the highest price. And so virtually everything sells, but you may be... For ten dollars, it might be you know a hundred dollars depending on the item. Um, so Max Sold is a place that will organize it for you, or allow you to organize it yourself and just use their website to upload the photos. But I have a really a lot of good luck with Facebook Marketplace or Kijiji. So the question is which either or? I would suggest it depends on the quantity and the nature of the things that you're trying to sell and your own comfort level with engaging with the public who comes to purchase things from you, right? So um, there are some scammers. I think, I believe that most people are good and decent, but you know, you have to make sure that you're comfortable with having to interact with people. So, you know, it's a personal preference thing and also a quantity thing. Okay. so. We are coming up at the end of our time together. I want to make sure that uh, if you are with us now, that you have an opportunity to ask any questions. If 
you'd like to unmute, you can go ahead and unmute or you can type it in the chat box, uh, whichever is best for you. We're gonna give you just one more minute to get in on this. Okay, well, we will be sending you this presentation. And if there's anything that you've missed, you know, we, we would love for you to reach out to uh, us, to me, there is our web, gee willikers, I got trigger finger here. There's my telephone number. You can reach out to me through my website or email. If uh, you're watching this from Facebook and you have questions, feel free to DM me. I would love to, to give you one-on-one -on -one personalized advice if that's what you would need. Um, and whether that's in person or by Zoom, we can organize that so that you get the service, the help, the consulting that you need to make a good decision in the future, okay? So please reach out and we're happy to help. Thanks a lot, Melissa, for organizing this. Thanks. She's going to be sending you off the presentation in the next couple of days. And if you have any questions, any follow-up, please reach out. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you being here with me. Thank you for your attention. And I will wish you a good night. Bye for now.